Hi card makers and welcome. I am Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and this is the Mediterranean Card Kit Assembly Workshop. I've got 12 really fun cards we're going to make together with our kit and the downloadable printable instructions. We're going to get started by just setting aside everything but the papers and then let's get those papers sorted into the order that we'll be using them. When I'm sorting the paper, I usually like to hold it upright so I can see it easily and sift from the top edges. And I want you to first find one of those gorgeous sheets of blue and then a dark yellow. So let's take a look at all these different shades of yellow here. We've got, this is what I'm gonna call light yellow. That's gonna be the gold and this is gonna be the dark yellow. So one dark yellow. Next, we're gonna find the gold and then a light yellow, that's like a real sunny yellow. Then another gold, another light yellow, then dark yellow, the last blue, and two prints. For the cut aparts, let's take the one that has all of the lemons kind of in this one area, this lemon pattern, that's really fun. And then the last sheet should be the final piece of cut aparts. And again, if you're a stamper and you prefer to just stamp your own sentiments using the coordinating stamps or any stamps for that matter, you should still follow the same trimming protocols. You could use a plain white sheet of paper or just trim it out as you see it and then use the backside. That's a freebie. <laughs> All right, let's flip, flip everything back over to that blue on top. And we're going to start with step one of our instructions. And right away, I just want to point out that there is an arrow on this uh, diagram here for the blue and dark yellow, which will be trimmed at the same time. So I want to make sure that I've got my, got my Fisker's guillotine trimmer here and I take this blue and I need to judge which direction the grain is running. So if I hold the paper by the center of an edge, uh, and just like wiggle the paper and see how wiggly it is. I'm going to rotate a turn now. Now the paper is not wiggly at all. So if I go back to this one and it wiggles more easily in this way and that actually then matches the desired uh, wiggle direction that's listed in the instructions. So I'm going to repeat that again for this um, dark yellow shade. Oh, there I can easily see it dips nice. Here's quite stiff. I want it dipping nicely from left to right. Now, as we go, I am using the accordion pocket file. Uh, this is a homemade item, and I have a, a starter kit and a workshop to help you make your own. This is what keeps us organized. Uh, we're gonna put everything belonging to the first set of cards in the first pocket and so on. If you don't have this, we can help you get your hands on uh, how to make one. But in the meantime, just keep three separate piles, one for each card type. And then typically I put any kind of scraps in the fourth pocket so that I, if I want to use them to embellish something further, I can utilize that scrap. But you won't have many uh, in this process. Now we're going to take both of these pieces at the same time and trim them at 10 inches. And as a just a review, or if you're new, make sure that your paper is resting uh, firmly along this edge here and that you're uh, stabilizing while you cut. That prevents that paper from jiggling around in the trimmer base. Now let's rotate this paper and so now the 12 inch side is against the edge here and we'll cut at 11 and a half. And seven. Now rotate the seven inch piece, so it's horizontal again, and we'll cut it five. Now you just made two sets of five by sevens. These are gonna be part of the five by seven card base, but before we file them, we need to score them. So I'm gonna keep a separate, completely separate pile of all of the pieces that we need to score. So I'm gonna put those off to my right. And then um, this longer uh, piece here, this also needs to be scored. So I'll set that aside. There is a narrow strip here that came off the end. I'm going to put that in the um, pocket D. It doesn't have a specific assignment. And now lastly, I'm going to trim this strip. This is 2 by 12 right now. We're going to trim it at 9 and 6 and 3. I'm going to stack all of these up and place them in pocket C. Now there's going to be a lot of stuff that goes in that pocket, so maybe think about grouping them together in the pocket a little bit by size, but if that overwhelms you, we can sort it all out later. 
Next, gold. I need to do the same test. It looks like it's dipping easily left to right, and that's what I want according to my diagram. And the same for the light yellow. So gold and light yellow at the same time. Our first cut here is at 11 and a quarter. 11 and a quarter. And then down to seven. Rotate the seven inch piece. We'll cut at 10 and five. And you just made two more sets of five by sevens. You can set those aside to be scored. And then this strip, we're gonna trim horizontally at six and three. You just made two more sets of two by threes and those should match the ones you already placed in pocket C from the previous. So that's what I mean by keeping them together in one group. It's just a little easier to, in the end, when we sort through all that stuff in that pocket. All right, now you have this another, another long strip here. We're gonna trim at six. And both of these get placed in pocket B. Uh, you got this guy. <laughs> We're actually gonna cut him. So we start out at Let's see, 11. Now, when you do this, it's kind of hard to see the numbers if you're flush with the top edge. So if you want, you can actually rest the edge beneath the inch mark. There's a straight line there, so make sure it's nice and level. And again, cut at 11. And then five and a half. You can even go to the midpoint as well. Uh, whatever works for you. So you just got these narrow strips. These were going to be scraps, but I rescued them. And I used them in card set A in kind of a clever way. So far, those are your legit scraps. I'm gonna throw those out. These two pieces are also a scrap and those can be set aside. Turning to page two of our instructions, we'll grab the gold. And once again, we need to droop easily, wiggle easily from left to right. And into the trimmer we go. We'll trim at eight and a half. Eight and a half. And then rotate, we're gonna go 11. And five and a half. If you make cards a lot, those trims that we just made are very, very typical to turn a sheet of 12 by 12 into two cards that fold easily in this direction. I set these aside to be scored. And then there is this narrow strip that came down. I also rescued these papers from being scraps. So we're going to trim this at seven and a half and three and three quarters, three and three quarters. Now these strips are gonna go in pocket A as well. And we have two more tiny little scraps. And then this strip, let's trim it at 10 and a quarter, eight and a half, and four and a quarter. All right, so you have two panels that are the same size. Those are going in pocket B. Then you have these other rectangles. Now, I did use the light yellow, but I did not use the gold. So I'm gonna take the gold and put them in pocket D. I'll take the light yellow and trim these at one and three quarters. And I'm gonna make a set of four squares. And those are gonna go in pocket C, but before we place them in there, I'll just tell you that they're designed to nest with these medallions that came in your kit perfectly. And then that will be a little foundation mat for uh, that item on set C. This time I'm only gonna trim one sheet of, of the dark yellow and when this dips, I want it dipping from top to bottom. That simply means that later on, we'll be making a fold in that direction. And that makes that fold look much better. Uh, folding against the grain results in kind of a crumpled look. All right, so we're going to start out at nine inches here. And then four and a half. Rotate and trim at ten. And this gets set aside to be scored. And then this you can trim at three. And that makes a piece for pocket C and a scrap. 
This matches the others. And let's repeat that for the next strip. We'll cut at 10. Set aside to be scored. Trim horizontally at three. This goes in pocket C. And this is a scrap. Finally, we have this strip here. It's three inches wide right now. And we're gonna cut it on all the even numbers. So that's 10, eight, six, four, and two. 10, eight, six, four, and two. And all of these can be placed again with their friends in pocket C. Moving on to the blue. This time we need to bend top to bottom again. We'll cut at 10, eight, and four. Now stack up the two uh, four by 12s. We'll trim horizontally at 10 and a half and five and a quarter. Gather up all four of these panels that are the same size, pocket A, and two legit scraps. Those go in D uh, for, you know, didn't use them. <laughs> then these next two strips, there's two of them the same width. We're going to trim them at the same time at six inches. These are going to be scored, so they need to be set aside with our friends over here to the right. To my right. I don't know where you put them. <laughs> okay, then we have our beautiful print. And I usually save the print for last because by now you're warmed up and uh, the print is a little, uh, if, if you really do a colossal error, um, you know, a plain sheet, it's easier to replace. So we're just going to start out by trimming off a scrap here. So it's going to be 11 and three quarters. And that just makes this really, really tiny little piece. And if you want, you can put that in pocket D. I didn't officially use it. All right, then go down to 10. Eight and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Rotate and trim at eight and four. And that's going to give you three pieces the same size going in pocket B with some similar sized friends. This next strip is currently three by 12. And we're going to cut this entire strip into three quarter inch pieces. Now, why would we do that? Well, let me just quick show you. I always like to know where we're headed. But on our never ending card, this piece right here is three quarters of an inch by three and each card requires four of them and we can get exactly the number needed out of this entire sheet. So just bear with me as we trim this. Now, uh, for measuring, you can, you can look at my list of numbers in the instructions or I just work with three columns at a time, right? So if I start out at 12 and I go one, two, three, that puts me at 11 and a quarter. Then one, two, three, 10 and a half. One, two, three, nine and three quarters, and so on. So nine, eight and a quarter, seven and a half, six and three quarters, six, five and a quarter, four and a half, three and three quarters, three. Two and a quarter, one and a half, three quarters. And now when you get to these little guys, you can just line it up there, still in the same spot, and support it by pushing down on the clear bar. One of the things I love about a trimmer of this size is still capable of making those narrow uh, strips. So here I have my stack of all of those little three quarter inch pieces for set C. And again, I'm gonna put these together with their friends over here on the right. They're the only friends, but that's all we're gonna trim from that size. The next strip, just this one, this is two, two inches wide again. We're gonna cut at nine, six, and three. And these are also for that never ending card that we're doing in set C. And they're gonna match my friends of all those other colors in here. 
The next two strips are the same size and we can turn them at the same time. First number here is nine and a half and then four and three quarters. So you made four pieces that are the same size and that goes in pocket B and C. Now these are a little smaller. Uh, in the, uh, in the, initially I wasn't gonna use them, but they do make some nice uh, decorative layering for us. So I'm gonna put those in pocket C sort of in a different area so that I don't get them mixed up with the two by threes. Wow, we've had six different uh, formulas we followed so far. So we're doing great. We're gonna get the next print. This is a little easier now. And our first cut's at nine. And then five. Give that a rotation and we'll cut out 11 and a quarter. Seven and a half. Three and three quarters. Hopefully you made three pieces the same size, all going in pocket A. And then this little scrap from the end was not used, but I'll put it in D for now. All right, now hang there with me on this one. Our first cut is again at 11 and a quarter. Then eight and a quarter. Five. Stay right there and rotate the five inch piece. Trim at three and three quarters. This goes in pocket A. And you did make a pretty tiny little scrap there. All right, the next piece goes in pocket B. The next one, it's four by three. We're gonna trim this horizontally at two. That gives us two more of those rectangles that match all the others in pocket C. All right, next, oh, there was a little scrap too that came off the end there. I'm gonna throw that in D. Okay, here we go. All even numbers, 10, eight, six, four, and two, 10, eight, six, four, two. Guess what we just made? A whole bunch more printed panels to match our friends in pocket C. <laughs> All right, we've arrived at cut aparts. Um, now, again, this is, might be review for a lot of you, but there is a little registration mark on each corner. Um, the ones on this corner are kind of hard to see, but you can still kind of make them out in the corners. Um, we need to remove everything from that line and beyond it to turn this into a perfect 12 by 12. So I'm just gonna start right here and take off the one I can see the most easily, and then I'll rotate, and then I can see even better at top and bottom I can see right where the stainless steel blade is on my trimmer base, and that identifies where that paper is going to get cut. And then line that up. And I need to do this on all four sides. So at this point, I can look and see that I have my 12 inches here. And then I might go back one more time and make sure. Really nice, accurate 12 inch or here. You can take all those little ends and throw them away. And I'm gonna go back now to uh, that pattern to be on the right. And pieces from that pattern are going to also be on that uh, card set C on the back of the card to give us some sweet little panels there. And I wanted those to be what I call a bleed. And I actually can bleed this on the right. So I'm gonna trim that 11 and 3 quarters. And if you want to deal with that right away, it just makes a little scrap. And then 9 and 3 quarters. 7 and 3 quarters. And then 7 and a quarter. Now, when you do that 7 and a quarter, you're just creating another legit scrap, okay? So that's what gives us a bleed on, on that side as well. And then we're gonna continue to slide down to five and a half, and then two and three quarters. Okay, now rotate this piece so it's horizontal, and our first cut here is gonna be at 10 and a half, eight and three quarters, seven, 
five and a quarter, three and a half, one and three quarters. So you just made a whole bunch of pieces that are one and three quarters, and they landed in an order that we're gonna try to maintain. So I'm gonna picking up everything that fell off, and then the one in the very back, the last one in the pile is just this kind of, I don't know, it's a scrap. Okay, I'm gonna put that in D. These I'm gonna just keep in order and keep them handy. Then I'm gonna take the next and do the same thing. So 10 and a half, eight and three quarters, seven, and usually I'm looking at the measurement and then verifying here that it's slicing it apart at the right spot. And then five and a quarter, three and a half, one and three quarters. Okay, stacking these up again carefully, remove the back one, and then I'm gonna put these underneath where I started, and this can go in pocket D as well. The next strip, this time they're, they're positioned differently, but the end result will be the same. So we're starting at 11 this time, and then eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Lots of trimming here. My friends, I apologize. <laughs> but you know, it's we're doing it all at once to make 12 cards, it's not so bad. Then I'm gonna put these behind my stack again and a scrap. So this can be carefully placed in pocket C. Now we've got these guys. I think I'm gonna to try to trim them at the same time. I might face have them face each other just because it won't maybe will slide a little less. And we're going to trim them all at one and a quarter inch until we get to the end. The last piece will be two inches. So one and a quarter inch at a time. And our first cut here is at ten and three quarters. Nine and a half. Eight and a quarter. Seven. Five and three quarters four and a half, three and a quarter, and two. All right, so we have a square, and that is a scrap. And then we've got all these cute little pieces. They've been facing each other, but I think that did make the trimming a little more successful, a little less slidey, aroundy. Keep these together in a pocket C. Oh my gosh, that pocket is loaded with fun. <laughs> okay, the last sheet of cut aparts here, and then we're almost done cutting. Once again, I'll, let's just take off that perimeter, and you can pause me while you do that, and I'll do mine. Okay, with that done, let's position this into the trimmer so that these blue... Uh, Tall rectangles are on the right. You've got happy birthday right here, and we're gonna cut at 10 and a quarter, eight and a half, six and a quarter, and four. Rotate so that this little guy's on the end. 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. You made four the same, pocket A. And you do have a little scrap here. These are easy, nine, six, and three. It doesn't even matter which direction. Nine, six, three. Pocket A, again, those are the innies. And here, with this on the right, just for consistency, we'll go nine, six and three quarters, four and a half, two and a quarter. These go in pocket B, and this last one, C. So B and C. Okay, these are the same. So stack them if you want. And our first cut here is at nine and a half. And then four and three quarters. And stack all these up that are the same. Those go in B. And two little guys going in C. 
Again, they originally were scraps, but I was able to, to rescue them. All right, keep your trimmer handy, but set it aside, and I'm going to support all of this so it doesn't fall off my table, and lay it down and grab my score pal. Okay, I think I have this pile situated just as it was when it landed, so yours should be in the same position as mine. If not, I'm looking for the blue narrow strips, and we're going to score these horizontally at five. So I like to use um, a round tip stylus. It seems to be the best, uh, I don't know, best thing to fit right into that ridge and create a nice score line. All right, so these are going in pocket B. Then we have some longer, we just two of the dark yellow that are a little longer. Um, they are four and a half by 10 and get scored at six and a quarter. Now, if you dig in, you should find two more just like it. One will be dark yellow and one will be blue. So six and a quarter, horizontally again, and six and a quarter. And we can just put all of these, all four of them, in pocket B. Next, we should have a five and a half by eight and a half. You can score it horizontally at four and a quarter. So we have a series of four nice, easy, single fold cards. I mean, all the cards are pretty easy. It's just that card set C has a lot of components. That was all at four and a quarter, and they're all gonna go in pocket A for a nice, easy warm up to our card making. Now we have the gold and the light yellow. We should have four of them in this five by seven size. They're gonna be scored at one and three quarter and five and a quarter. One and three quarters, five and a quarter, one and three quarters, five and a quarter, and one and three quarters, five and a quarter. So all of these are basically scored horizontally, the same spot, two times. And I'm just gonna have you set these aside for a moment. Then let's put these in vertically and we'll score at one and a quarter and three and three quarters. One and a quarter, three and three quarters. One and a quarter, <laughs> three and three quarters. One and a quarter three and three quarters. All right, I'm gonna get my trimmer one more time. Next, I can work two at a time if you want. I'm gonna take this uh, piece that we scored vertically. I'm gonna turn it horizontally now, and I'm gonna trim through the score lines. So if you're not trimming through score lines, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I want you to take this one and trim at three and a half, and then take the two blue together and the two yellow so they stay together. Let's repeat that. So you should have two more that we scored vertically. Rotate them and trim in half at three and a half. Keep the blue together and the yellow together. All of these go in pocket C. Now we're going to flip that whole situation. These were scored horizontally on the horizontal and we're gonna rotate them so they're vertical and so that we cut through the score lines. Again, if you're not cutting through score lines, you're doing something wrong. So since this is five, we need to trim in half at two and a half. So that's vertically. And once again, we're gonna keep these together and these together. Two and a half again on the vertical so that you're cutting through the score lines, these together, and these together. Pocket C. That really was the final cut, <laughs> and we'll set our trimmer aside. Next, I'll turn to page four in my instructions so I can get a visual on what all the cards are gonna look like. And I really did try to kind of keep my stuff organized within the pockets, so I'm going to pull everything out, and if it's gotten jumbled, no problem. 
You'll just need to take a second or two and sort everything out by size, which I usually do anyway. You've got these long pieces and the shorties, all those panels and your card bases. Now would be a good time to take your card bases and find the bump of the score line and fold so that the bump is on the inside of the, the fold. And since we scored this paper uh, with in consideration of the grain direction, the folding goes very easily and the folds look beautiful. So we not only scored, um, but we're folding with the grain and that's gonna give us just a really nice card. It's all about the little things, isn't it? All right, now let's start with a light yellow vertical and a gold vertical, and then a light yellow horizontal and a gold horizontal. Each card will receive one blue panel. So just get those sent out. Notice I'm dealing them from my hand, so picking up off the table, so it's like a deck of cards. And then a print will be distributed. Every card will get a strip in the opposing color of the card base. So this will be uh, gold, yellow, gold, yellow, gold, yellow, gold, yellow. Then the sentiments. We'll go with the outer sentiments first. So we're going to have vertical. That'll be still, uh, let's see, sorry, that's the pits, <laughs> and still wild and crazy. Sorry, that's the pits, still wild and crazy. So we have one, in, one sentiment in each direction. And then for the inner sentiment, we'll say, hope things are better soon, just only until about 9 p.m. or so. That's pretty much me. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> hope things are better soon, just only until about 9 p.m. or so. Now, as is our custom, all of these cards will assemble the same exact way. So I'm going to take, and here, you've got a couple of options at this point. You can just pause me and finish assembly on all four. You can take all of these cards and put them all in one envelope, or as I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take one of each and put it in the appropriate sized envelope. So these are A A2 envelopes, and this one will receive the card that we complete together. So and the steps are super easy. I'm gonna have you go ahead and begin with the strips and then locate the washi tape. This is such a sweet little washi tape that came in this collection. It couldn't have matched more perfectly. And let's run that tape through the middle of the long strip. And you don't even need to cut it, just tear it off and wrap the end around to the back. And I'll do the same for this little short strip here. Just run it through the center, tear. And remember, you'll have a lot of leftover washi tape when you're done. So save some of this for the outside of the envelope so that they match your cards, which is really Kind of nifty. Okay, next. Let's take some adhesive and we'll nest our panels. So I'll do the blue panel. I'm using my ATG gun. This uh, is probably the most economical, uh, both, both cost and time. And since I'm just gonna be picky here, I'm using my two by eight grid ruler to find one set of cubes from the edge. That's an eighth of an inch and that'll help me attach this perfectly level and centered. And the same is true for this one. It's just one cube from the edge of the blue panel, both on the edge, on all edges. You saw how fast that went. So once you sort of get used to doing that, it's, it's fantastic. Now here, I think I'm gonna go about one and a quarter inches up from the bottom edge. So I'll add some adhesive to my little three and a half inch, I believe, anchoring strip. Make sure that's gonna be level and centered onto the printed panel. So there's a lot of action going on there, but it's okay. Then, sorry, sorry, that's the pits. I think that's a half inch from all edges, and that's the case. You can attach this with um, foam adhesive or just keep it nice and flat if you prefer, if you'd like to just be worry-free with your mailing processes. How easy was that? Now would be a good time to install this long strip. And then the last thing we'll do is make our bow. So the long strip here, I'm gonna put in ooh, maybe an inch from the edge. That's designer's choice. Use my ruler to help keep it nice and straight. 
And then our sentiment. Hope things are better soon. I'm just eyeballing that. I have plenty of room to write. Write lots of notes if you want. And let's make a bow from this pretty yellow ribbon. This is just, it's like a double looped bow without any kind of an end. So I'm going to try to create a loop that's about just shy of the width of the card. So I'm making a double length and then I'll trim that off. And I've got my tape always in a dispenser handy and I'm just going to uh, lob off a real small strip. <laughs> See how big that is? And then I'm going to form a little circle with the ribbon and try to make it so that the ribbon is going in the direction of the grain of the ribbon because ribbon has grain too. There's going to be a way that it will want to go and a way it won't want to go. <laughs> then I'm going to do a second bow. This one, a second loop rather. This one is going to be a little bit smaller than my first one. If you have to account to it, it's going to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to tape this into a circle. Done. Now I'm going to take this largest loop, grab another piece of tape, and I'm going to find that tape to center. And the tail that I have here, or the whole rest of this ribbon, I'm just going to tape it to the center. Okay, there we go. So now I have a circle of ribbon with a piece of tape on the back center where the seam is. I'll take my second bow and make sure the taped side is facing the back and nest it on there. And then wrap this ribbon around it to hold it. Do you see what's happening? So nice. One last piece of tape. Sweet. Then with my fabric scissors, I'll just trim off the excess tail, even out the bows, and I've got a nice embellishment for my card. That's probably a good reason why I didn't uh, attach this particular one with foam adhesive, and I'll explain a little bit about that on my other cards. At this point, if you want, I like to use glue lines. Um, these are the smaller lines. They're one inch, and I'm going to just plop this directly onto my card base and burnish it nicely so you can peel away the backing and then just place this on. Now why all this effort to make this particular bow? Well the reason I did it this way is because it's incredibly flat. There's no, even though it has a little bit of um, heft to it, it's flat. There's no lumpy knot in the middle. So it's a wonderful bow for card makers. So it's just, I wanted to go through the effort of showing it to you. I do have a ribbon basics video that also covers it, but only with one loop. So this is the two, two looper. <laughs> okay, that's my sample. So I did it also flat. This is with the wider taffeta ribbon we've included. Same exact process. A little easier because the tape is the tape. I made another one. Now this one I attached with foam adhesive. I don't know if you can see that or not. My foam adhesive circles, which I love, love, love. And that created a little bit of height and then I was able to put this right underneath it in that open space. It's the same sentiment. This, and then when you attach your greeting on the inside, it's just horizontal. And then this last one. This one I did just make a standard double looped bow. I also cover that in Ribbon Basics. And there you have that. Lovely set of four cards. So this one is done and can go right into the envelope with the other friends as a nice sample to reference for my assembly. Plus you have the instructions and now we're ready to move on to set B. Go ahead and take everything out of the B pocket and organize it by size. And then finally fold every card or panel on the score line and making sure that you bury the bump of the score. So that on these narrow strips, just fold to the inside. So you can go ahead and do that. All right, let's take these four uh, split flat card bases. We'll go 
uh, the dark yellow and end with our blue. And then each one will get a larger panel. And how about we go with the gold on this one? Bright yellow on this one. Gold on this one. And once again, a bright yellow here. And notice how that fits on the inner base of the card. And then you've got these other smaller panels. So I'm gonna, again, alternate colors. So light yellow, gold, light yellow, gold. That worked out well. Each one's gonna receive a printed panel and that nests right on here. I love what, when my planning falls into place. And then we get a blue strip that's been scored, each one gets one of those. One, two, three, four, and a printed panel. See how fast it deals out from the hand. Now let's do, each one receives a tag shape. One, two, three, four, and then a sentiment. All of me loves all of you. No card can make this better. I thought it, getting old would take longer. I hug, just hugged you in my thoughts. For the innies, we're gonna do You're the Best. But I'm sending one anyway. No card can make this better, but I'm sending one anyway. I love that. Then we've got a happy birthday, and I hope you felt the squeeze. At this point, it's fair to say that we can take our A6 envelopes and stuff the card contents of number two, I'm sorry, number four, number three, and number two into the envelopes, and we'll do number one together. They all assemble the same way. So no, don't worry about that. All right, let's begin with this inside panel and the wing. It has like a almost like a belt buckle wing situation. And what we want to do is attach this centered onto the panel, and I'm just going to eyeball that. I did a few where I used my ruler, and it is a one and one eighth, so it was a little high. There we go. So once you have that centered, you can flip it over and adhere this little two inch flat to the back of the card. And then you can add adhesive to the back of the panel and place it on your other card that has the flap coming out to the left. So the card is open, flap is on the left, and here we go. That's our nice split flap look we got going. Next, we have some nesting to do, so I will adhere the light yellow and then the print onto the closed left panel, thus incorporating all the colors into the card. Now on the front of this flap, so if you close the blue flap, this fits right in there and it looks fabulous. And on my original sample, I put this on the back of the, the thing. <laughs> But then Beth came over and looked at my finished cards and she didn't see the sentiment here. So I think what we'll do is adhere it to the inside of the card. So that's hindsight being 2020. And the fact that you're watching this on video instead of just looking at my instructions because my instructions show my original sample with the sentiment out here. It's up to you. You can do it either way. Next, if you happen to have a corner chumper, I used mine on the quarter inch setting. So again, on the side here, you can see half is, is debossed into the metal here and a quarter. So if I just put, make sure your thing is open and you can insert it in there while it's open. Then you can adhere this to the tag. Come back in with a crocodile and punch. Now I have to admit there was a oopsie daisy on this one the um when jack designed the spot for the hole unfortunately during the design process this little indentation occurred slightly off center <laughs> and when i tested it i noticed it but i'm like it's the tag i never thought to check the art so my apologies it's yeah it doesn't happen too often but we definitely have a little centering snafu that i don't think anybody will honestly notice <laughs> All right, we have two full yards of this really beautiful um, thin 
white ribbon with that metallic edge. So I can just tie onto this tag a little bow or just a little knot. Depends on what you prefer, but there's a lot of ribbon to go around. I'm just gonna make the knot right now because I've already done a lot of bows today and I left myself too short of a tail. <laughs> How's that? How do you like that? Now here, when you attach this, you ca I kind of thought it would be nice if it was centered within this flap. And it's going to go up past the edge of the, of the band a little bit. So just make sure that when you apply glue, you kind of hit the center and you avoid the edge or you're going to have glue exposed. And once again, I'll eyeball this so that I'm going centered to, with the band and then centered with the printed flap area here. That's it. That's all there is to it. Do I always say that? That's, that's all there is to it. I know that was a lot, a, lo a lot of words to explain something that was quite easy to make. Now we're going to try that never-ending card. Job one is to get everything out of the pocket as carefully as possible so that you can keep all of your stacks together as much as you can. And if they've fallen out of place, just reassemble things in order by shape and size. If you want, you can also sort all of these two by threes by color. So I have a print, I have the dark yellow, a light yellow and a gold, and then blue. So if you get those sorted by color, I think it'll be easier to kind of figure things out. I'm also turning to page six of my instructions so I can figure out what in the world is gonna go where. <laughs> so I'm gonna begin with two, these, these long skinny strips, and I'll go two yellow, two gold, two, this is the light yellow, and two gold. So kind of the same thing here. So do you see how these pieces, they're gonna end up being the base of our cards, okay? Then we're gonna distribute these as well. So two blue, and these are gonna be positioned as I'm showing you side by side in this direction. So they kind of flip flop. And then I'm gonna go two of the dark yellow, two blue, two dark yellow. Each one of these piles gets four of these skinny, skinny, skinny. Done. And then each one gets four of these patterned, smaller pattern pieces. Now I'll distribute um, the, the gold. So put two gold with this blue and then two more. And this one, two gold, two gold, and more gold, and more gold. <laughs> so that's got six gold because that doesn't have any gold in it currently as far as the card base. Now let's distribute the pieces with the prints. This first card is going to get two. Then the next one gets four. The next one gets two. And the last one gets four. Now, did it have to be this way? No. The way I did it was just distributed them. I'm looking at what I did and helping you duplicate it. So it doesn't have to be this way. Um, on the blue panels, we're going to put two on card number two and two on card number four on this dark gold we're going to put two on card number one and on this light yellow two on card number four <laughs> i think that's that's it all the cards should have the same number of two by threes and if they don't um, you can just fix that but it should be eight one two four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we have, there are friends, there is family, and then there are friends that become family. Grateful for you. That's gonna go on this one here. 
and the same. There are friends, there is family, there are friends that become family. Those are, and then everything in moderation, including moderation, happy celebrating. And that repeats for the other card. So that was the advantage of keeping those numbered and in order. Now these last pieces can be distributed at your discretion. Oh, except everyone gets a yellow square, light yellow square. I used these to add panels to plain two by threes and they weren't perfect nest either. So if they were, I would I'd be more precise about where these go, but you can just let your muse be your director. <laughs> this is a really good time to use our envelope saving technique. So I'm gonna take this entire stack here and put that into an envelope and repeat that for all the remaining cards. And now we get to do this one together and I'm so excited to show you how it works. It's fabulous. Okay, so this first set of horizontal pieces I've isolated and we do need to fold. It's a good idea to fold them. And notice I'm folding them with the bump of the score on the inside of the fold and placing that facing down. And then I'm also gonna crease these folds as well. And when I'm gonna place them out to the side here, with the folds kind of facing up. So these are down and these are up. Next, we're gonna be adding some adhesive into the four outside corners of this card base, but we'll do it kind of one corner at a time. Now it's important to keep in mind that the glue starts in the corner and stops at the score line here. And it only goes down as far as the score line on this on this piece here. So that's the line we don't wanna go past, which is basically one and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna just add glue into this little rectangular shape in this corner with my uh, wet glue. Then I'll take this winged piece and I'm gonna line it up with the corner. So this corner lines up with this corner like so. And the reason I'm not using a dry adhesive is that the wet glue gives me some time to make my adjustments to make it perfect. Then I repeat over on this corner, this upper right corner. So again, I can't really go past where this score line is, my imaginary uh, score line. So I'm just gonna go to the corner, stop there, and make a rectangular shape with my glue. Then this side gets placed, and I'm even starting here at the center and then aligning the right edge. And honestly, just a small blip of space in between is totally okay. Okay, so now I have the top front of my card attached. Now the easiest way to finish these attaching this bottom corner is just to flip it over. So let's do that, let's flip everything over. Now my glue will be applied to this bottom corner here on each side. We can, uh, if we want, we can do both sides. And remember, I have to end my glue at this score line and at the corresponding score line on the yellow panel here. So a rectangular shape in each corner again. This time I can add my piece and this is with the, the flaps bending outward I can line that up and I can adjust. And flip it back over so that now we're back to the blue on the front, yellow on the back. And we'll make our first turns of the, what's considered the never ending. So what this does is opens from the center and then you're gonna want to reinforce those folds that naturally occur. Our next comes from the center and folds this way. And you can also reinforce those folds. Now from the center, it will open to take us to the back of the card. And then it opens again to take us back to the front. Now, what we can do is find our four little prints and I'm just going to use my wet glue 
and I'm going to place them within the center of those outer areas on now again what I'm calling this blue is in my mind the front of the card okay and these just add a little something special you don't have to use a liquid adhesive for this at all I just it was handy <laughs> and the piece I like to use a liquid with these smaller pieces okay with those attached now I'm going to take my two gold panels and I'm going to go for the big boy here and I'll add the yellow the dark yellow to the other scored area and then the sentiment everything in moderation that fits right into this spot the last thing we will end up doing is taking a square and sticking the medallion to it and putting it here along with some ribbon, but we'll do it, at, do it at the end. So just ignore the embellishment for now. Let's open to the very first turn. And this time I'm gonna take two of the printed panels and I'll center them the same way I did before. So center that here that here. I'm choosing to add the word including to the top and you could do the bottom as well. Totally up to you. Maybe I'll do the bottom and see what happens. <laughs> okay then this opens from the center here to reveal two more spots and this gets the dark gold. So I'll take this And center those. And now I get the punchline for my joke, my four part joke. <laughs> it's really a three part, including this gets the word moderation. Now, as in my sample on the left side, I chose to decorate it a little bit by adding this. And it's not quite to scale, which annoyed me a little bit, um, but I decided to add it anyway. I'm going to go that way with it. Nice. Then it opens from the center again to lead us to the back of the card. Our final two gold um, little mats fit here. How about a happy celebrating? And I'm leaving this one blank so that you can write a note. Sign your card so that someone can know who the brilliant person was that gave you this handmade card. I'm putting adhesive onto the rectangles for the wings. Wow, and we're back to the beginning again. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Happy celebrating. Everything in moderation, <laughs> including moderation. Happy celebrating. Everything, back we get the idea. Now, for this last finishing touch, I'm taking some ribbon here, I'm just gonna cut a length of the blue taffeta and fold it in half with uneven ends. And I'm going to create a loop. And that just adds a nice little flat again. I really like the idea of applying ribbon to a card that is uh, pretty, adds something, but doesn't add bulk, right? Because I hate worrying about the card arriving with postage due. And some a square and place this here. So this is why I saved this for last. So I'm going to take my my wet glue. This is the book binding glue that I use every day here at Club Scrap. If I'm here, I use it as much as my ATG. I'm just finding the larger flat surfaces. It doesn't have to be every single swirl on here but aren't these beautiful and just so perfect and elegant for the theme mm -mm -mm. centering that onto the yellow square and then what i did was put <laughs> my tape dispenser on it and that is what happens when it dries then it doesn't take long and that will bond nicely with that yellow paper underneath and your card is complete 
So I'd like to thank you for your patience in getting all that paper trimmed out and following along. I think the way I have the, the pictures of the cards with every single turn is what will help you with figuring out what goes where and how I used these guys. I mean, it was just completely optional. Um, I regret adding one to the back of the card because I want to have a plain spot for writing a sent writing my own like signature. So anyway, that was a Mediterranean car kit. I hope you had fun and uh, thanks again for joining me. I invite you to join me also for the Mediterranean page kit assembly workshop. We're gonna have a fun time over there too. So I'll see you soon.